Hey guys, and welcome to um, my brand new rebooted Unity RPG tutorial series. Um, as you guys know, uh, my most successful series, the RPG series from before, uh, was progressed uh, very far. Unfortunately, due to a lot of, uh, you know, Unity updates as well as standard assets being missing from the asset store now, uh, I decided to create a new Unity RPG tutorial series, and this one will be beginner friendly, um, and anyone will be able to follow along and create games. And very similar to the last one, we will be creating a saving system, an inventory system, uh, you know, a weapon system, enemy system with nav mesh and AI, uh, a stats system. Uh, but the only difference is this time instead of creating, you know, like a medieval type of RPG, we're going to create kind of like an FPS type RPG, kind of like Fallout um, or GTA, where you'll be able to shoot your enemies um, and it might may or may not be, you know, in a post-apocalyptic world. Now, um, if you guys are watching this, um, I want to, again, thank you guys so much. Um, I just laid, as I just said, I laid out kind of the blueprint of what I'm hoping we will be able to accomplish in this series. I'm going to try to finish the series as best that I can. Um, and I'm aiming for around finishing the series in about three or four months because I do plan on uploading every single day with this series. Um, yeah, so the first thing that we're actually going to do um, to get started is we're going to get player movement. In. Before we can get the saving system, before we can get the enemies, we need the player and we need to be able to move. Now, I kind of cheated a little bit. Um, and we're not actually going to create the player movement ourselves because player movement is pretty complicated to get right uh, for many beginners um, as well like as a way to save time and as a way to f you know jump over the standard assets uh, hurdle for, because as it is missing from the asset store as of today uh, we're actually going to go to the asset store and I found another asset called the modular first person controller and we're actually going to use this asset um, to as our player movement base um, and I'm going to add a link to this uh, asset it's a great free asset um, everything that we do in this uh, video series will be free um, but I'm actually just going to link this to this in the description below and you guys can also download this asset and import it to game, into your game and follow along so once you have added that asset from the asset store to your uh, you know package manager what you're going to do is you're going to click windows and you know package manager and over here, you can see in my assets, I have a modular first person controller. Now I'm actually just gonna press download and it'll start downloading and we're gonna import our modular first person controller into our game. Um, now, when you first load up Unity, it should just have a scenes folder. If you have anything more, then it's not a new you know, file. Um, but as this uploads, you'll start to see that there will be another folder that will appear. Alright, so I finally finished downloading it. As you can see, there is a new folder here called Modular First Person Controller. And what we're going to do is we're going to click in the first person. You can see there is a prefab here, which is kind of like a pre-made object for us. And we're actually going to come here in the hierarchy uh, screen. And we're going to right click and we're going to press Create 3D Object. And we're going to create a plane for our player to stand on. I'm going to move it down a little bit. And then we're going to delete the main camera because we are gonna be importing a first person character. As you can see, I can drag this into the scene and I just did. Uh, and I'm actually going to raise this up a little bit. Okay, so the way that we're actually gonna move our first person controller up is we're gonna adjust the Y value to be about four. And now if we press play, uh, we're just gonna load in and we're gonna drop onto the ground with the player. And this is a really cool, um, uh, player movement uh, uh, controller asset because it, it is a rigid body first person controller and this enables us to do some cool physics stuff later in the video series um, and as you can see I can now move around I can jump I can even run if you hold down shift and we can even crouch and this is a great start because it just boosts us forward by about three or four videos in the series and saves us a lot of time. And now we have a fully functioning uh, first person controller. Okay, so now we're just gonna press exit. And what I wanna do again is I want to create, um, you know, a health system kind of for our player. Um, and 
in order to do this, I'm actually first going to just change the color of the plane to be black. And we're actually going to do something else here. We're going to go into our first person controller and we're actually just going to delete this canvas here called Crosshair and Stamina uh, because we just don't need it. We're going to create our own Crosshair and cam uh, our, our own uh, Crosshair and Stamina system. Um, because as you can see, we had a crosshair when we were first playing, but now it is going to be gone, as you can see. And there is an error in the script, as you can see in the console, and that is because in the script of this modular first-person controller, uh, we kind of removed the shift, uh, uh, the shift uh, canvas uh, image item. As you can see, there's it says none here, uh, but we're going to actually just. Uh, untick this and now it won't even display um, and now we're gonna go into our assets folder we're gonna press right click in the assets uh, projects screen uh, window we're gonna press create and we're gonna create a new folder and we're gonna call this scripts um, and what we're gonna do now is we're gonna create our health system and a little bit of a damage system so we're gonna go into scripts and then we're gonna right click again and we're gonna create something called the c-chart script and we're gonna call this player stats and this script is essentially going to uh, is essentially going to control our entire players. Um, you know, their statistics, their health, their hunger, um, everything in between. Their you know maybe they're even we might even move like bullet count or like inventory into our player stats script. So this will probably be the most important script uh, throughout the entire series. So yeah, make sure you name it correctly. Okay, so now I'm actually finally inside uh, Visual Studios. You can see that we have two starting functions here. Uh, and what we're gonna do is we're actually just gonna delete these uh, for now. Um, and I'll show you guys what these do in a second if you guys are beginners. But the first thing that we're really gonna need to do is we're just gonna create something called a public, um, sorry, we're gonna create something called a float. So we're gonna do public float uh, help. Um, and we're gonna default set this to be 100, let's say. And what we just did here, um, always control S after you're finished typing a line. This will save your script uh, so it doesn't go away if your computer crashes or something. Um, but uh, basically what this does is that if you go back into Unity, you can see that if we drag our script into our first person controller here, um, you can see that we have a new thing called health here with a hundred, um, with a hundred uh, value. And what we're at, another thing that I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna un uh, couple un prefab this. So right now it's a prefab, and that means that anything that we add to it won't be, um, won't be like set in. Um, so that means we have to unpack the prefab. Um, that way it's like its own unique thing because we're creating something unique. Uh, for the first person controller um, and there we go so now we have the health and another thing that we're going to do is we're going to um, come here and we're going to create a new folder actually let's create two new folders let's call one player oops I spelled that wrong so this folder will have all of our player related scripts inside of it and then let's create another folder and let's call this um, enemies uh, now, we're gonna, obviously going to have a lot of enemies in the future that we're going to need to code with unique, you know, behaviors. Uh, but first, we're going to create an enemy, let's say, like, I don't know, a uh, zombie, let's say, for example. Uh, and we're going to go into our play, uh, zombie script. So we're just going to double click into that. And we're also going to give this... Um, a value of damage. Um, so we're gonna delete these two functions um, and we're gonna type public float damage is equal to let's say 10 and then semicolon after to end the line. We're gonna control S to save the script and we'll go back and wait for it to load and then you can see here if we add a new 3D object, let's say let's add a capsule and make this represent a zombie. We can add the zombie script in here and you can see that this uh, capsule right now has a script um, with a damage value of 10. Now this by itself doesn't really do anything yet, but we're going to code the damage part uh, right now. 
So now, uh, what we can do is public, we're going to create a new function called public void on collision, enter. And, oh, it didn't let me auto. There we go. So on collision, enter. So what this does is that whenever a player touches it, um, whatever's inside this function will fire. So for now, let's just say uh, prints uh, hit. So now, if we go into our uh, game, you can see that inside the console, every time the player touches uh, the zombie, or, or capsule in this case, oh, sorry, it's going to say hit. You can see here, hit, hit, hit. Um, actually, we have a problem with the first person controller. It's because uh, the sprint bar is, you know, um, we removed the sprint bar and that is an issue. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into the scripts. Before we do anything else, we're going to go into the scripts and we're going to control F for the sprint bar. And now we're just going to delete the sprint bar. And then every line you can see here with the uh, sprint bar, we're actually just going to delete those lines. So um, we can actually just delete all of these. And now we've removed pretty much all of the errors. There's still a couple more. We're just going to delete this, delete this. Um, and then yeah, one more. And then yeah, let's just delete this. And then control, press control S to save. And once you've gotten all the er rid of all the errors, we can go back into the game. And you should see that when we press play, uh, there will be no more errors or whenever we do anything. So we can see hit, 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 hit. Oh, there's more errors. Um, I think we removed all of the script bars. Do let me go check here. Which line is it? It's, ah, so over here we have a sprint. Uh, we have a reference to sprint bar CG. So if we go to sprint bar CG, we can see here there's a canvas group here that we've deleted. Uh, so we're actually just gonna remove that instance, and then every time that is mentioned, we're just gonna delete this. Um, and so yeah, you just got you guys just want to delete everything that I delete here inside of the script, and now finally. Uh, it should be good for us to just press play and there should be no more errors. Oh, oh we have one more error. So hit, 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 hit. Thankfully the game doesn't crash this time. Uh, if you, I'm gonna figure out the what the error is real quick. Uh, ah, so the crosshair, that's right. We also removed the crosshair. Um, so we're actually just gonna look for the crosshair here. Um, and we're gonna delete the sprite. We're gonna delete the color. We're gonna delete all of these. And then we're gonna look for every instance where there is an error. Um, and we're just gonna delete all of these. And then there should be eight more errors. We're gonna delete all of these. And now the last error, we're gonna delete this. Okay. So now that we've deleted all of the crosshair and canvas related uh, problems that we had, we can press play and this time there finally shouldn't be any more errors. As you can see, there are no more errors. Our cursor is uh, not locking anymore, but I will fix that uh, probably at the end of this video. As you can see, every time that we touch the zombie, it says hit. And now what we're going to do is we're going to inside the zombie script, instead of printing hit every time that the player hits it, we're going to get uh, if we're going to type if collision dot game object dot tag uh, is equal to play, uh, player, uh, then we're going to print hit. And essentially what this does is that it makes sure that we only do damage when we hit the player. And actually, I think we should cap this, capitalize this. Um, as you can see, our first person controller has uh, the tag of hit uh, of player. So now, nothing should have really changed. Whenever we touch it, it should still say hit. So you can see it says hit, it says hit. 
But now, if our capsule touches the ground, it won't say anything. But when it touches our player, it'll say hit. You can see here, hit, 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 hit. But if it touches the ground, it won't do anything, which it would have done uh, before. Um, so now, instead of saying print hit, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get collision dot game object dot get component, and we're gonna get the component uh, first person controller, the script that we just made, and we're actually gonna set the health. Uh, sorry, not the first person controller. Sorry, the player stats. My bad. And we're gonna get the health. Change the health. Uh, to be minus equals our damage. And what this does is that it allows our, um, uh, our health inside the player stats script uh, to be manipulated by this new zombie script that we have here. And for some reason, my player script is a bit bugging out. There we go. Um, and if you watch carefully over here on the right side of uh, the inspector, you'll see that right now it says, uh, oops, my health is at 100. Um, but if I walk in front, every time I hit the zombie, it'll go down by 10, go down by 10, and go down by 10. And there you have it, guys. We've created a basic character controller as well as um, a basic health system where if you get hit by an enemy, you'll lose your health. In the next episode, we're going to add UI to display and implicate to the player that he is being hit. And this way, uh, we can also add our own crosshair and debug a little bit of the FPS controller that we added. Um, and maybe we will also get to giving the zombie, you know, an actual zombie look instead of a capsule. But thanks for watching the first episode, guys. Um, I hope that, you know, you guys will keep watching. Uh, we're definitely going to create a better RPG series than the last one that I've made. And yeah, so thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you guys in the next episode.